hey loves welcome or welcome back to my channel today guys i'll be checking out this interesting video from charlie keck and it's titled snobby Comey wants to hijack the election system you guys i'm excited for this and without much ado let's see what this video is all about Hello. Um, so from your talk, I gathered that a big problem you have is the government representing the will of the people, and you believe it should do a better job at that, correct? Um, if you say that, how can you support Donald Trump when he has lost the popular vote twice? Because we don't elect presidents using the popular vote. Yes, but you said you have an issue with the government not... Uh, representing the will of the people. So if you personally have an issue with that, then why do you support him if that is not the will of the people? Right, so will and majority are two different things, right? So are we a democracy? You're not, you're not here. Are we a democracy? Should we be? No, but are we? Why should we not be? Is that not a core fundamental point of uh, American society? No. Has democracy appeared anywhere in the Constitution? I mean, that is genuinely a valid point. However, your point of the government should represent the people, mm -hmm. why is it that democracy is not in the Constitution? Or why is it that you believe that the will of the majority is not as important as the will of the minority if your issue specifically is the government should represent the people better? Good question. So we believe in the Electoral College. Why? Because Kansas deserves a voice. Because Missouri deserves a voice. And it's the most important way I could distill it is the union we have is the states created it, the federal government didn't create it. So the kind of price of admission is every state gets two senators, congressmen based on population, and then electoral votes based on that population. So you kind of get a mix of both. And it's also this tension. And I would ask the question, if we abolished the Electoral College, do you think that the needs, wants, and interests of Missouri, Kansas, Iowa, North, South Dakota, Montana would be taken as seriously as New York and California? That would be my question to you. Do you believe that some citizens are more valuable than others because in our current system some people's votes hold more sway than others because people in like Wyoming who have smaller populations have more say than places like here in Missouri and Kansas. Why is this acceptable if it's again your issue is the will of the people? Because we're not a democracy. So a democracy is simple majoritarianism. So let me give you an example. In a democracy by up or down vote you could say I want to enslave black people. A constitutional republic says, no, you're going to have to go through a process to do that. So let me ask you a question. Do you think the majority of the will of the people could ever be wrong? Yes. Okay. So the founding fathers knew it could almost assuredly be wrong, right? So the system of a republic versus a democracy is it has to be slow and arduous and intentional because it has a preference on liberty, right, not on free stuff. And so over a period of time, how do you best protect liberty? Well, you got to spread over all the representation over space and time, right? So you do it over a lot of states, a lot of square miles, a lot of acreage, and it takes a lot of time to take over the federal government, right? You have to win an election, and then an election, and an election. It's not impossible. We eradicated slavery. We gave women the right to vote. So it's possible to get change done. But the Founding Fathers were less concerned about getting progress done really quickly, and they were more concerned with the government doing bad stuff too quickly. Does that make sense? But that is not what you said. You said that your specific problem is the government does not do the will of the people. Why is it that your will and what you want is more important than that of the majority? Well, it's not my will. It's the framers and the system we have. Yeah. But to answer your question, I believe the best way to determine the will of the people is through states' rights and states' directives. Yeah. If Kansas wants to say, hey, we can have decentralized gun laws or school choice, God bless Kansas. And so the question is not, is national will also versus state will, right? Wow, you guys, what are your thoughts on this video? And whose sides are you on in this particular debate? Let me know in the comment section down below. This video is getting really interesting and I'm enjoying every minute of it. You guys, 
Let's continue watching. So the, we have to recognize that the values of someone in Kansas, in Manhattan, Kansas, is a lot different than the values of someone in Manhattan, New York. It's a lot different. And so through a democracy, it'd say, hey, the people of New York City want to have firearms confiscated. I don't know how, I don't think that dog's going to hunt in Manhattan, Kansas. Well, Kansas State University, so I don't know. But it allows, answer your question, it allows people that disagree with one another to live in the same nation. You see, a Republican-style government, small r, allows people that might agree on almost nothing to still engage in self-government while That's still true. having a national project yeah. to, to participate in. So to make, clarify it even more, it is a question of the consent to the governed. If it was just a democracy, it would be an up or down vote on every single person, and that's it. Mm -hmm. The Founding Fathers saw that fail time and time again. Athenian democracy, people just vote themselves stuff. So they said, we have to have some sort of system that realizes that if men were angels, government would not be necessary, but men are not angels, so we gotta create some sort of government. Federalist 51, as Madison said. So we gotta figure this out. So government is necessary, but we don't wanna have too big a government, and people are just gonna vote themselves stuff all the time, so how do we do that? Well, local is better than national, but you've got to have some sort of a national influence. And so they created the great balance between Jeffersonian and Hamiltonian type philosophy, as we know, is the U.S. Constitution. And the one thing they all agreed on, though, is human nature. They knew that absolute power corrupts absolutely and that people were likely to abuse it. So I would just kind of counter by saying the will of the people can be best expressed through a multi-state project. For example, I believe a election is much healthier and much more representative by requiring candidates to go to Iowa, Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and not just spending time on the coast. Because you know why? It might seem as if, oh, we don't need those flyover states. We don't need them. First of all, that's arrogant, prideful, and wrong. How exactly are you going to feed your family, and where do you think the breadbasket of the world comes from? The founders saw ahead, and the final thing I'll say is this, is that it was Hamilton or Ma it was Madison that said, we cannot have the tyranny of the cities over the farmers. And that, that's built into our system. Thank you for being here tonight. i got to get to the next question. Thank you. So you believe your vote should be more important than others? No, I don't. In fact, if you want, first of all, the way you do senators is egalitarian. The way you do Congress people is representative population. And let me just reinforce this, which again, California still has more electoral votes than Kansas. So there is a precedent. There is a weight on population. It's just done in the, done in the context of that every state gets a voice. For example, Kansas, South Dakota, Oklahoma don't get merged in just because they all look the same from an airplane you're flying by. It's a state with states' rights, its own government, its own constitution. So to push back, it's not as if population means nothing, is that population is factored in to a national project. And I'll just say one final thing on states. You go through COVID, Europe, they had one decree, every part of Germany, Belgium, France did the same thing. These laboratories of democracy that continually happened keep us freer. And you have a state rights project or you have a national project, the state's rights project has kept us freer, has kept people more prosperous, because if you don't like your government, you're closer to it and you can make changes and adjustments. Yeah. Thank you. Got to get to the next question. Thank you. Got to get to the, I'm sorry. I got to get to the, thank you. Thank you. Thank, I got to get to the next question. I, I, I heard you out. Thank you very much. Uh, I, that's not the question. More vote. So, hey, do you live in Kansas or Missouri? Because guess what? In Kansas, you actually have a bigger voice than some people in California. Hilariously, because states have rights. Because I got to get to the next question, but but I don't think you're hearing what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Got to get to the next question. Wow, you guys, that was such an interesting one from Charlie Cake and what Charlie Cake is doing across the campuses in America is even bigger than what these students are learning in colleges. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section down below and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.